And I definitely talk about Abercrombie more than I talk about Neil Gaiman. The bones of what could be my absolute favorite thing still, but it's, it's not very good in my opinion. Why isn't this good? I wanna talk to him. So is The Shattered Sea by Joe Abercrombie any good? No. I mean, it's not bad, but it's, it's not very good in my opinion. We're just gonna chat about that today. It's a series review. I will keep it, I'll keep it non-spoiler up until the very end. And then there's a spoilery thing that I wanna talk about that in my opinion might improve your experience if you know it before you read it. Because I learned it in the midst of reading it and it did increase my enjoyment a bit knowing it, even though that was technically a spoiler. So I don't want to like force that on you. So I will talk about that at the very end so you can skip it or like not hear it uh, if you don't want to. The Shattered Sea by Joe Abercrombie is his YA series that is a Viking inspired YA series. Lord Grimdark, one of, if not my favorite author, because officially my favorite author is Neil Gaiman, but if not my favorite author, one of my absolute favorite authors. Like I get, I mean, honestly, like Neil Gaiman and then immediately below that is Joe Abercrombie. And I definitely talk about Abercrombie more than I talk about Neil Gaiman. <laughs> when I first learned that Joe Abercrombie had written about Vikings. I was like, that is destined to be my favorite thing on the planet. And then it definitely wasn't. <laughs> so I read Half a King quite some time ago. It was actually Bethany's first Abercrombie. And like at the time she hadn't read any first lot. It was her first Abercrombie. And she was like worried about having to tell me that she didn't think it was very good because I had hyped Abercrombie so much. And I was like, this isn't it. Like the Abercrombie that I've hyped to you, he's not here. <laughs> she was like, oh, phew. Thank goodness, because like I was like, uh, I don't really get why you think it's that good. And I was like, I don't. So I had heard that the second and third books are better. And also they don't follow the same character anymore. They follow, it's, it's like tangentially connected, but it's not like a direct sequel in the same way where you keep following the same character. And so having heard both of those things, I was like, well, maybe the first one is like not that great, but like it maybe it gets better from there. So then I reread Half a King it had been a while. And I was like, yeah, still not good. And then I finally got around to reading Half the World. Also these covers are gorgeous, but uh, Half the World and uh, Half a War. And they're just, they're so painfully adequate that it truly hurts because it's not, they're not bad. Like they're not, there's nothing that I can rant about really. There's nothing in it that I'm like, oh, why would you do this? Or like, this is so stupid. Or I can't like, you know, it's very cathartic to rant about books. I can't rant about these. They're they're all three stars. I read Half a King and when I reread it, I was like, yeah, still three stars. But like, I, I'm hopeful and excited to get maybe, you know, some four stars in here. And Half the World, you know, for a minute there, I was like, this might be edging toward a four. And then it just like fumbles the landing. And I was like, that's, that's a three. Okay, but Half a War could could do it and no, it eked out a three. There were each of the, in each of these books, there were things about them that I thought were very, very good. And there were things about them that were like, I could see Abercrombie like peeking through. I was like, there you are. That's it right there. Yeah, yeah, more of that. But I just, I, I really like, I wanna talk to him. And I, I don't mean another interview because like, because that would be weird and uncomfortable. <laughs> but um, like if I could just like have, I mean, in my perfect world, I would not have interviewed him. In my perfect world, I would have had a pint with him for like 10 hours and just like picked his brain, you know, casually one-on-one, -on -one, not like worrying about promoting anything or like not saying anything that's like not cool to say. Like, I just, you know, I just wanna like talk to him. So like if he and I were like friends and we were like at the place where like, I could be like, hey, my dude, we're besties. So don't take this the wrong way. But like, what the fuck? <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say that, but like what I would truly like to ask him if I had the opportunity and um, we were, you know, we were chill like that to be like, did you think that because it was YA, then similarly to how like the kids menu has like no spices and like no flavor because kids can't handle it, which I disagree with. I wasn't allowed to eat off the kids menu as a kid. I was just fine. So like, it feels like it's utterly devoid of the like tantalizing, tangy, spicy flavors that First Law is just overflowing with. This is like only salt and pepper and not very much of salt or pepper. And I just, I, because I, I don't know for a fact that he thought that and that's why this is like this. Maybe he just wasn't inspired to write anything that interesting here. But it feels like there are so many things in these books where like, if you had just made this longer, if you had really leaned into this, if you had chosen to really kind of like make this messy and complicated and like go there with it, if you had written this for adults or at least 
I don't think you need to have written this for adults. I think that we need Abercrombie to be in the mindset that he's in when he writes for adults. Because it feels to me like his mindset here is like, okay, like this could be interesting. But every time I'm like leaning towards making it interesting, I have to like subdue that impulse because this is for the children. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's such a tragedy to me. That's why it's so painful to read this because like, this could be so good. There is like the bones of a masterpiece here. The bones of what could be my absolute favorite thing still. But it's written so like lacklusterly that feels like, oh, okay, so this is like the kid's version, you know? And it's, I think it's unfair if that was the mindset because I don't think you have to pull your punches like that. You do have to write a little bit differently for a YA audience. You can't write first law for YA, like no. But you do not have to utterly strip back anything of depth interest, nuance, or darkness. And and that said, there is a, quite a bit of violence. There's quite a bit of dark things in here, but there's just like, I mean, that's just the pepper, if that makes sense. Like, like black pepper, <laughs> not like, you know, habanero peppers or ghost peppers. <laughs> so it feels like he thought that you had to keep it kind of one note and blah. Like you could have some dark stuff, but like nothing too dark, nothing too interesting in its darkness, because, you know, you can't make kids think that dark things are interesting. And oddly enough, the main character, Anne Half a King, who ends up, he's still a character in the other two books, he's just not your POV character, he became such a more interesting character as the books went on, because, like, he became this, like, interesting and wild card, enigmatic Littlefinger type character that you didn't know what his deal was because he was no longer your POV character. He was so boring to me to read about in Half a King. But by Half a War, I was like, man, I'd really love a book about Yarvi. And then I was like, well, I have a book about Yarvi and it wasn't good. <laughs> but now he's very interesting to me. Um, and it was like things like that where I was like, we're seeing glimmers of like the types of character work that he's able to do, that he's so good at doing, that he's just like choosing not to do here for some reason. And that's the only explanation I can think of is that he thought that he, that he can't or that, that he thinks he has to pull back for YA. And I'm like, you don't though. Like a little bit, like a tiny bit. It's more just like kind of how you frame it things like that. But like, I've read plenty of YA that like really goes further than this. This is a bit older. So maybe that's like a newer idea in YA. But I mean, like Dread Nation by Justina Ireland, Even Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo, uh, Madness So Discreet by Minnie McGinnis. There's some quite dark YA books. Like if he was, if he thought that he had to pull punches like this for YA, then I wish he had just written a Viking trilogy for adults instead. Like I don't think it had to be like this for YA, but since he seems to think it has to be like this for YA, I wish he hadn't written it as YA then, if that's what it takes for him to write something interesting is to write it for adults. Then then write it for adults, please, sir. I'm gonna put these down, they're heavy. Yeah, and like when I think about it, that's why I thought going back to reading these books that I was like, maybe I'm remembering it like badly or maybe because I was like expecting first law, but like, no, I'll lower my expectations. Maybe I'll have a good time with it. And I felt the exact same way reading it Half a King the second time and then continue to feel that way reading Half a War or Half the World and Half a War. Where again, like in concept, there's a lot of things. That's why I say there's a bones of a good story here because in concept, the world that he is showing us, the types of world building he's doing, the setup, like the, the situation our characters um, are in is a fascinating situation that could, it is ripe for uh, an interesting examination of motivation and conflict and political maneuvering. And then it just like, doesn't actually like, <sighs> I don't, it's like when you order something on a menu that sounds like it should be the most tasty thing ever and you get it and you're like, I don't know why this isn't good. Because like, all I know what's in it because it's all listed on the menu, but it's just, it's just not good. Uh, and I, I don't really know why. It's if I'm sorry if you like Qdobo. And if you don't know what Qdobo is, it's like Chipotle except shitty. And it's wild to me the first time that I went to a Qdobo because someone told me, oh, it's not good. And I was like, I'm looking at it and it looks like exactly the same thing that I'd get at Chipotle. How hard is it to mess that up? It's all the same ingredients. Like it's like a subway, like you can see what's going in it. You can see what the salsa looks like. You can see what the meat looks like. You can see what it all looks like. And I was like, this looks like a carbon copy of Chipotle. And Chipotle is pretty good. So I was like, how bad could that be? And I, I looked at them make it and I knew what was in it and I've had Chipotle before and I got my food from Qdobo and I was like, how is this not good? How did you mess this up? And that's how I feel about the ingredients and execution of The Shattered Sea, where I'm like, I know what's in this. I remember what's in this and I know what's in it while I'm reading it. Why isn't this good? Why isn't this interesting? Because like, if I'm, if I was to describe this situation, that sounds interesting and yet it's not. <laughs> it's just wild to me when I'm uh, experiencing that, when I'm like just absolutely baffled as to like, usually I'm pretty good at pinpointing why something doesn't work for me. 
And here the only thing that really I can point to is just like a lack of spice. I don't know how else to say it. And I, I did, we did uh, the first book as a patron buddy read. So I did kind of talk about it with my patrons, half, uh, half a king. So we kind of diagnosed it a little bit and just sort of how individual, it's, it's kind of hard it's hard to diagnose overall as a whole. It's easier to diagnose specific situations that are in the books where like, see now, if this situation had been allowed to develop over a longer period of time, and if this particular dynamic, we had been allowed to see it like kind of grow into this thing in this way, as opposed to like learning about it immediately or things like that, where I'm like all these little tweaks throughout where like if this had been presented like this, or if this had taken a little longer, or if this had been given time to be a mystery, or like all these little things along the way that like as a in incination would come out to be a better story experience. It wasn't like any one problem all of the time. There was just so many things like that where I was like, why didn't, why did you waste this? Like why you presented a thing where like you could have actually really done something with that and made it interesting. And instead you were just like, nope, I'm just gonna throw it in there. <laughs> Like you could have caramelized the onions, but instead you like chuck it in raw. And I'm like, but for why? <laughs> and then in half, uh, half the world, the second one, the like I thought it might be a four. It was a little more interesting, and it was doing a little more things where I was like, now that's more like it. And Yarvi was suddenly a much more interesting character than he was when he was our POV. So I was like, okay, okay. And then it did one of the most YA things that I've ever read in any YA book in my life. And I was like, sir. Abercrombie you wrote this are you kidding me so I was just so aggravated by that I was like no and then the third one the third one I think that the ending was actually kind of the best part of it but it did meander a lot to get there and had still the same problems of like things not given the room to breathe enough not allowed to be as complicatedly nuanced as they could be not giving us enough insight into how messy the motivations of the characters would probably be in this situation just kind of glossing over it and I was just like why why? <laughs> this could be so good. Okay, and the last thing that I want to talk about is the spoilery thing. So before I talk about spoilers, I just want to say if you're interested in The Shattered Sea, I wouldn't say don't read it. But if you're interested in Abercrombie, um, and like you don't know where to start, and you're like, maybe I'll ease in with Shattered Sea instead of going straight for First Law, don't. If you want peak Abercrombie, if you want to see why he's hyped, then read First Law, because that's where he is that's the Abercrombie that we're all talking about. Shattered Sea, like, I don't know who this is. What is this? <laughs> but if you've already read First Law or like you're already into Abercrombie or whatever, and you're interested in the Shattered Sea, it's not bad. It's by no means bad. It's it's very like fine. <laughs> and that's what's so tragic about it. Cause like, I know this author's capable of greatness and there's the seeds for a great story that Abercrombie could write the shit out of. And for some reason he didn't. Like if you want to read them, read them. They are not bad books by any stretch. If we're looking at like who to, what books to give to kids, these are YA books. So like if it's a younger audience we're talking about, then like, sure, then don't start with First Law. You could start with Shattered Sea because that's the age they're geared towards. And I don't know, maybe if I had read them when I was the age they're geared towards, if I was like 13 or 14 or whatever. Oh, is that why 15? I don't know how old you're supposed to be for YA, but like, I might have liked them more. I don't know. It's hard to say. But they're not bad. They are by no means bad. They're just painfully adequate. <laughs> so again, if you're interested in them, you know, give it a go. But don't, don't expect too much, especially if you're coming off a of first law, don't expect first law. And if you've never read first law and you want to try Abercrombie, don't, don't reach out to see, read, read first law. So anyway, the spoilery thing. So this is your final warning. I'm going to talk about a spoiler that I, again, I think it's worth knowing it before you read the books because it helped me to be more interested in this and is an example of like this. There is some interesting stuff here that like, ugh, you just like didn't do anything with it. Anyway, so final, final warning. This is spoilery for the Shattered Sea. If you don't want to know any spoilers about Shattered Sea, then bye. So the Shattered Sea, it comes across or like it's presented to you as probably a fantasy world. It's not, it isn't really written like historical fiction because like we know so what history we do know of the Vikings. Like this isn't it. This isn't based on any like Norse saga, but it is very Viking inspired, the world. So you're like, okay, so it's a fantasy world inspired by Vikings. Like, cool. I've seen that. They have like a shattering that they referred to, hence the Shattered Sea, where like God was like shattered into all these like different gods. And so then you end up with this sort of like pantheon, which is again, reminiscent of the Norse pantheon. And you know, just the way they live, you know, they, they raid on ships and it's quite old medieval-ish vibes. So again, all of that great Viking vibes. I'm assuming this is a fantasy world. It's not. It's not a fantasy world. 
there isn't actually any magic in these books. Which like reading Abercrombie isn't necessarily a red flag, isn't necessarily something you're like, oh, there's no magic in these books. What's going on? Because First Law barely has magic in it. So what it is, is a dystopian far future where we had a nuclear event and that is the shattering. The shattered sea, like the great shattering is a nuclear event. And there are parts of the world that like people don't go to because they are cursed. And that's like the vernacular that is used to describe it because that's how they would talk about it. But in fact, those are like nuclear fallout zones where like you are cursed because you are poisoned by the radiation that is still there. So people like don't have that knowledge anymore, but that's what's going on. It is not like gods and curses. It is nuclear fallout, which is, that's very interesting. And they talk about like artifacts of like the elves of the olden days, which is like, they talk about it the way we talk about like in like Lord of the Rings or something, some like elven weapon of great power that is like mis mystical and mysterious. But in fact is, you know, weapons technology of our day is a gun. It's things like that that are like, oh, this artifact of the elves is a gun. Uh, they don't know how to make those anymore. So it's a magical weapon as far as they're concerned. So that is, a, that's great. That's fantastic. That's so interesting. If he had written an adult trilogy that's Viking inspired, but is in fact a far future that is post nuclear apocalypse. Like, that's amazing. That sounds like my favorite thing ever. Um, and the, it's just so... So lackluster. Once I knew that, because you don't find that out for quite some time in the books. So once I, since I already knew it, because I had that spoiler, then it's fun to start to see those things. Instead of having to wait to go and reread it once you learn that, you can know that going into it and start looking for the signs of it already and pay attention to how they talk about artifacts and gods and curses and things like that and look for those things. Because it is interesting when you know that and how it's being referred to and how it can work both ways. It's, it's just so tragic to me because like, again, so many good ideas and there's a genuinely good political situations, political machinations, character, messy motivations that it's just not explored enough. It's not dived into enough. And that's why it makes me so sad because it could be so good. I really want to like commission him to like do it again, but do it right. <laughs> Anyway, um, if you made it this far, let me know in the comments down below. Your thoughts and feelings about The Shattered Sea, if you've read them, if you want to read them, if you plan to read them, if I've convinced you to read them or to not read them or whatever, let me know. I post videos on Saturdays, other random times as well, but definitely Saturdays, so like and subscribe. Join my Patreon if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you when I see you. Bye.